everyone and welcome to the tour of our Toyota 4Runner we have her for a few years now I believe we have her for four years and we are thinking in changing her but before we get rid of her I wanted to show it to you because this is a question that we get asked a lot and is which car we use to transport Venus and Apollo I seen like a lot of Malamute owners they want to have something similar or their car is getting too cramped, too small, and they wanted to upgrade. And the Toyota 4Runner, we actually purchased it for Venus and Apollo. When Apollo stopped being a puppy, he was too big for, we had a Ford 150, and they were very cramped in the back of the seat, so we decided to upgrade to an SUV, and that's when we got this car. This is not gonna be a review for people that love cars, this is a review for people that love dogs so this review is gonna be from the point of view if you want this car for big dogs like Venus and Apollo, Malamute, Huskies, German Shepherds any type of adventure type of dogs is this the car for you? the main complaint I have as a dog owner is the AC unit this is the only AC we have in the back of the car and when we put down the chairs up for Venus and Apollo to lay down completely in the cabin. They co the seats cover the AC vent and it doesn't have a lot of flow ventilation to the back. So we need to have the air blasting through all the cabin. Even if we're in the snow, even if we are in cold weather, we have to freeze ourselves for the AC to be blasting to the back. So in the near future, we want a car that have AC vents in the roof. Another thing is I wish the carpet that they use for the back of the seats was a little bit of better quality. Uh, I have a Mercedes GLE 350 and the quality of that rug to clean is way easier than this one. This one we have to use the vacuum and we have to use a little squeegee to get in all the crevices and get all the hairs that get stuck back here so that's another complaint that i have but i do love how much space we have here in the back like right now i'm sitting in the back of the truck and you can see how much space we have and if we fold the chairs up venus and apollo fit comfortably especially if we have Sometimes we put Venus's bed, she have a purple mattress for dogs, the largest one, and it fits super comfortably in here, and we have so much room. The day that we bought the Forerunner, <laughs> the day that we bought the Forerunner, actually we couldn't find a hotel in Alabama, and we ended up sleeping, the four of us, back here, and we fed comfortably. Comfortably is a stretch. We did fit though, but not comfortably. <laughs> The TRT Pro is higher than the regular 4Runner, so if your dog is a little old or have hip problems, maybe it's a little bit difficult for them to jump. Venus and Apollo are 5 and 7, they still are good jumping, but that in the future is something that we have to have in mind. If you like technology, maybe the 4Runner is not the car for you, because it's very antique-like. We had to change the radio because it didn't even have CarPlay and I get lost in Miami. So if I leave the city, I will get extra, extra lost. So we have to put a new radio that have Apple CarPlay because the native um, GPS system, I didn't like it very much and I will get confused using it. It was very antique-like. So that's something that you have to have in mind. The Forerunner is super reliable, but because it's super reliable, everything is like 10 years old. So we changed to this radio from Pioneer. They have uh, Apple CarPlay, but it's not the best. It will do a lot better if it was something that it came with the car. I believe the new 2022 Toyota Forerunner, they have changed it. I'm not sure if you offer CarPlay, it but it does? Yeah, it does. The new one does have Apple CarPlay um, native. And I believe the screen is also a little bigger than the old one that we had. 
I think it's bigger than this one actually, but not by a lot. It's a, it's a little bit. And then it has like the knob for, for volume and for the tuner. Uh, so it's a little faster if you need to like turn down the volume really quick or whatever. So the new one is a little bit nicer. So yeah, it has a little bit more technology. And I think also this one doesn't have like any technology whatsoever. So all of those safety features like lane keep assist or the blind spot awareness, we don't have it. The new one, I believe, does though. And it also has the cruise control that it kind of helps you uh, keep with traffic. So if there's a car in front of you going a little bit slower than you, it'll actually slow down for you. So another thing that this one specifically doesn't have. But the new one, I believe they, they, they changed that already. The only other technology that this car has that most cars uh, won't is this whole like system here. Uh, most cars do have like a mode uh, selector that they just selects the, the terrain, you know, like mud, sand, snow, things like that. The other thing that this car has though is frog control, which is like a cruise control for like off-roading. Uh, it, it helps you to not get stuck by like hitting the brakes or something on, on certain tires if there's slippage. Um, here's the mode selector and there's also... so. Depending if you hit the button or not, you have the mode selected. So you can kind of like see the, the snow, the sand, the rocks. And then if you hit on, it changes a certain mode. The other thing you have up here is um, what they call a locker. And it'll lock the rear wheels so that both wheels spin at the same rate. Because normally the, the wheel with the least resistance is the one that spins faster. And that's necessary for if you're turning, because when you turn, the outside wheel spins a little bit more than the inside wheel. So you lock this and both wheels will spin at the exact same rate. And that's handy if you're like stuck somewhere. Uh, here's a track and a track is a little different than a locker. What it does is the computer system in the car senses if a wheel is spinning faster than the other one. And it'll actually hit the brakes very lightly on that wheel that's slipping to send power to the other wheel that's not slipping to get you out of a, of a stuck situation, any kind of situation that you're in. So and then the other thing that this car has, sorry, that this car has that's uh, different too, is to turn it into four wheel drive. So it's, it has four wheel drive, but it's in, it, it has a two wheel drive normal. This is a center uh, differential or a center locker. And when you put it into four, it actually divides the power 50-50. So that's why you normally want to have it in two wheel drive and you to turn it into four wheel drive you actually have to like turn it all the way down uh, it kind of feels cool like it feels retro i guess i don't know um it feels like you're really doing something it gets you more engaged well the car is very retro if yeah. you like retro this is the car for you if you had a very adventurous dog this is really good if you're gonna take them off-roading if you're gonna take them to trails they are in the back country this is great to have because we have gotten stuck in this car we got stuck one because we put it in a place that was very muddy and we got a um, high center high so, center yeah so there was like um basically the wheels were in two holes oh uh, all four wheels were in the holes and they were just spinning in the air and we were literally just hanging because the, the center was too high and we had to get pulled out for that one but we took Venus and Apollo to the snow in a Denali, um, GM Denali, and they didn't have any of these things. And we got stuck and we have to wait 24 hours for the tow to get us out of the ditch. Thankfully, we got in a ditch really close to the Airbnb we were renting and we were able to walk home. But the car got stuck because it didn't have any of these control thing is that this one has yeah the, i think the the denali just had like a four wheel drive but like i mentioned normally the wheel with the least resistance is the one that spins and that's what you want for normal everyday driving but in a stuck situation you don't want the wheel that's just hanging spinning right you want the other one to still go so the denali was just stuck and it wasn't going anywhere now I'm gonna show you Apollo's favorite feature that I think we are not gonna find in any other SUV and it's this. This car has that black window that goes automatically and Apollo loves to go in the back saying hi to all the other doggos 
and to see when we are in the snow it works awesome for us because we could open that they get the breeze and the cold air and we could put the heater we is the only time that we could put the heater in the front is when we open that back window in the snow so the other benefit to that back window is when we're driving down let's say at more reasonable high speeds like 50 miles an hour and up if we lower the windows even if it's a little bit and if you just crack them sometimes the air is like coming in i don't know the aerodynamics into it but it sometimes makes a noise i'm sure those of you that have done this that know what i'm talking about that don't make a noise like do 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 and it gets super annoying the faster you go and the benefit to the window in the back is when it's doing that i just have to like lower the window even just a crack and the air just passes right through and we don't hear that noise so i really really like that window i'm gonna miss it <laughs> one of the main reasons we got this car it was to be able to take venus and apollo on trails that they were out of the beating path and that it was good off-roading though she does great she is a really good off-road vehicle in the city it kind of sucks a little bit because it spent so much gas and on today's day that the price of the gasoline is so high skyrocket i don't know why it's going up and up here in miami right now is about four dollars and fifty cents and in some places it goes all the way to 4.99 this car drink gasoline like no other we are doing more or less 13 miles per gallon in this car which is sucks especially i see a big difference i have a mercedes gle 350 and my car does such good mileage with the gasoline that's when we really start seeing how bad the forerunners do with gas i put gasoline on my car once a month and we put gasoline on this car every week Something really cool that the Forerunner have and other off-road vehicles like Jeep is how many accessories they sell for them. One of the first ones that we add, it was the light bar. We didn't use it that much, but it was really cool when we use it. Like right here, we use it in Kentucky. We were going through the Nara Tunnel. It was super dark and the lights of the car alone wasn't enough. When we used the light bar, it was like daytime inside that rock tunnel. And we also use it sometimes at night when we wanted to have Venus and Apollo off leash on a trail. We didn't do this very, very often, but the times that we did it, it was fun. So we have this air compressor inside the car. And this is the thing that we use for the air compressor. I don't know the name of anything of this. This is a pressure regulator. And you just put that on the hose and you can, you know, Adding this air compressor to the Forerunner was a great idea. We don't only use it to fill up Apollo's paddleboard, but we also use it to put air on our own tires and on other people's tires. Uh, it was a little expensive, but we used it a lot. And this is the things that I'm gonna miss about the Forerunner. They sell so many cool accessories like this that they don't sell for other cars other than Jeeps. We also changed the native roof rack for this one from front runner to have more space for traveling and Jay used it to take pictures sometimes. In four years, the front runner took us in great adventures between snow, mud, beach, different states. We did over 20 states in the front runner and we had a lot, a lot of fun. The vehicle is very capable of going off-road, of driving in all type of weather, especially if you get good tires. And definitely we are gonna miss it. We did so many memories in this car and we are so thankful. But it's the time to say goodbye to our beloved Forerunner and see what is next for us. She had a lot of good things that we loved, but at the end, it came down to the AC and having snow dogs. We need a car that has vents in the back for the snow dogs that we have. We hope she take the next owner in as many adventures as she took us and that they treat her well. She was an awesome car that we definitely are gonna miss.